Good morning. Welcome to St. Julie's and the celebration of the fifth Sunday of Easter. Presiding at Mass this morning is Father Paul. Our opening hymn is number 723 in our Breaking Bread hymnal, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King. Once again, that's hymn number 723. Please join us. <laughs> To Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very good morning, everyone. We also celebrate today Mother's Day, so we remember all our moms living and deceased in our Mass as we gather together now our prayers so we pause to acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory, glory to God in the highest, glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicotine, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your mercy be on us, O 
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bear me, Lord, be upon your heart, your lips, that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you lord jesus said to his disciples do not let your hearts be troubled you have faith in god have faith also in me in my father's house there are many dwelling places if there were not would i have told you that i'm going to prepare a place for you And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do not know him, or you know him, and have seen him. Philip said to him, 
Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. beautiful thing recalling during the month of May that even Jesus had a mother at whose knee he learned really the first things about the life of faith. And we see throughout the scriptures this very close unity that they shared. You know, Mary, the first disciple and always present uh, in those significant moments of his life. Now, today, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, is, is Mother's Day. And if we were blessed, we had a good mom who also co communicated to us from our earliest uh, parts of life, uh, really the mysteries of God and, and God's kingdom. And I think of my own family life. Our mom was the pillar of our life, of our faith, of our understanding of God, and that pillar only stood because of the foundation, which was Jesus Christ. You know, my mom uh, lost my dad at a very early age, and she was left with five small kids under 10 years of age, and I still remember her coming home from the hospital shortly after my dad's death, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I, I remember her saying, uh, you know, life isn't fair. In fact, life is very difficult. And I remember at that moment, she had us all kneel down together and pray. And that was part of our family life throughout our formative years. And I was thinking that her message wasn't that far from the words that we heard Jesus speak in the gospel today. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You know, realizing that very often our hearts are troubled that life is difficult. It's often not fair, but he doesn't leave it there. He says, believe in God, have faith in God, have faith in me. Let me be that rock, that foundation on which you stand. And he invites the apostles to follow the way that he goes. And Thomas, doubting Thomas, we heard of a couple weeks ago, speaks for us uh, so often as he does in the gospel today. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. You know, Bishop Barron often likes to point out, he doesn't say, I will show you the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way and the truth of the life because without Jesus, there is no going. Without Jesus, there is no understanding of the greater context of life. Without him, our lives lack the meaning and purpose for which God designed each of us. You know, all of us now for two months have been in this period of upended lives, upheaval, you know, uncertainty, not sure what lies ahead, and the words that Jesus spoke to the apostles uh, today's, in today's gospel have as much meaning for us now. You know, when Jesus first spoke those words, it was shortly before 
his passion, his death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven. And the apostles had grown very close to him, had in, invested their lives in him. And he knew that very soon all of that would be taken away and they would be filled with fear and again uncertainty. Their lives would be upended. And so he offers them these words of confidence as he does so often throughout the scriptures, don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Okay, Lord, how do we do that? Have faith in God. Have faith in me. Okay, can we do that? And then beyond just simply having that faith, can we truly follow the Lord as the way, the truth, and the life? You know, when we look at the bigger context of our own existence, you know, it is in relationship with the mystical body of Christ, with the church throughout the world. So in our ups and downs and in-betweens of life, we walk with brothers and sisters in faith who bolster us up in our need, who encourage us in our low points, and also that we too might be those encouragers, those who lift up the burdens of others. You know, the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles today, we hear about those widows that are neglected, their needs, uh, in the very early church. And the passage doesn't go on to say, well, let's just all go to church and pray and hope that things will get better. Now, right from the beginning, it was let's roll up our sleeves and see what we can do for these individuals that have great need in our midst. And from the beginning of our church history until the day that Jesus comes again in glory, that's our story. Yes, we gather together in faith to worship, to believe in God, to invest our lives in the kingdom here, knowing that one day, it will be a reality in that place that the Lord has prepared for us in eternity. But in the here and, the, and now in the always, it's up to us to participate in those saving works of the Lord, especially extending our lives to those in need, of sharing the gift of our own faith, of exemplifying that faith through the style of, of our life, of inviting others into that wonderful relationship with the Lord that we possess, that we might grow as one body of Christ, that mystical body of which St. Paul speaks. Toward the end of the gospel today, Philip offers words that perhaps should have as much meaning for us here today as well. Lord, show us the face of the Father. Let that be our enough. You know, when our eyes are fixed on God, when our lives are focused on the life that God has given to us in discipleship, then we begin to realize that life of abundance of which Jesus speaks, that life of abundance in the here and now, whose seeds are planted, that one day will come to fruition in the fullness of the kingdom. But until we reach that, that point, uh, each and every day we have the opportunity, the challenge, the invitation to participate in the life of our Lord, especially by sharing that gift of his love, his person to the world. Together now we profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting now in the Lord who promised that he would prepare a place in the Father's home for all his disciples, we bring our prayers before God. That church leaders will show us the way to the Father and be heralds of the good news for all who search for truth. We pray to the Lord. O God, hear us. That the world's leaders will work to build a world where peace and justice reign in the hearts of all. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For everyone affected by the coronavirus and other serious illnesses, May we grow in our awareness of our fragility in living together in external consolation through prayer and concern. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and expectant mothers, that they may know the value of their nurturing presence and the love of their families. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For all among us who are suffering, especially the poor, the sick, and the dying, and for all who have died, especially the deceased members of the God's family, Bobby Schmelter, Paul Kubica, Shelby Bernardi, and, the, and all those who, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. For all the intentions of our mothers, Dane Novena, and the persons personal intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. Provocations to the priesthood and religious life for those who have asked for our prayer, for those who have no one to remember them today, we pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. O oh God of compassionate love, we raise our voices to you. Hear our prayers, which we voice in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is our way, our truth, our life, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 424, How Great Thou Art, hymn number 424.
Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by this wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Julie Billiard, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family that you have summoned here before you this day. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Together with Mary and all the saints of God, we join our hearts and voices and pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be, free for, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Give each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in the singing of I am the Bread of Life, hymn 327 in the Breaking Bread hymnal. The body of Christ. I am the, bread the body of Christ. Of you who come to me shall not the blood of Christ. And who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come the body to of Christ. me. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And I 
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Perhaps most of you have heard uh, the main announcement of the week already. I uh, announced on Monday morning after finding out at the end of last weekend that our administrator who will be coming September 1st uh, following me here is Father Ian Hagen. Now many of you know Father Ian who spent six years here as a seminarian and was ordained from here two years ago, has been at St. Monica's in Santa Monica. Now, many have asked, why is he being named administrator and not pastor? Well, the practice in most dioceses as our own is when someone comes to uh, parish in the leadership role who has not previously been pastor, generally they are named administrator for a period of time, usually a year. And if it's a good fit for uh, the administrator and for the parish, and they're able to, uh, you know, make that transition from associate to pastor, then they can apply for that position uh, generally in a year. So hopefully that will be the case with Father Ian. So I know that all of you there, along with uh, myself, join in welcoming him uh, with great joy. Um, it will be a blessing to all of us. Just a couple uh, announcements. Uh, just a reminder, last weekend I made the announcement we're inviting individuals who speak any language other than English to take a short video clip of yourself saying, peace be with you uh, in your language, and then sending that to Daryl here at uh, St. Julie's. You can find that information on the website. That will be used for our Pentecost celebration that comes later in the month. You know, again, a reference to the 12 widows in the first reading today. I was talking to some of the ladies who manage our food pantry during the week, and they uh, had conveyed to me that we are giving out about as much in a week uh, to low-income, poor families here in our vicinity as we used to give out in a month since the beginning of the pandemic, especially with so many out of work. So uh, many of you have been generous in dropping off food or uh, cash to purchase food. So it's much appreciated, much, much needed, and remains right here and serves those in our own uh, community. So uh, anything that you can spare would be would be wonderful. And other than that, was there any other announcements? I, well, Mother's Day, uh, we, we have the novena all week, and uh, today's the first Mass, so if you'd like your moms remembered and didn't get a chance to come by the church office, you can even email those to me, and I'll make sure that your mothers living or deceased are remembered in the uh, 
in the Novena of Masses. And I'd like to offer this blessing for all mothers uh, present here today and all those who have had motherly roles in life, whether godmother or aunt, uh, foster mother, whatever that may have, be, may have been. So uh, please close your eyes as we pray. Most gracious and loving God, we pray through Jesus, the Virgin Mary's child, who has brought joy to all Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine on their children, that he may bless them today and always. They now thank God for the gift of their children. May they be one with them in thanking God forever in heaven, in Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. So a special happy Mother's Day to all our mothers there. Um, I know in certain parts of the country, uh, Mass is beginning to uh, become public again. Doors are opening. We haven't gotten that word yet from the Archdiocese of L.A., though our last uh, protocol we got was to last till May 15th, so perhaps by the end of this week, next weekend, I'll have some, some news regarding how that will change. But uh, in the meantime, it's just uh, stay in shelter and uh, have spiritual communion and participate Mass uh, through these video presentations. So I know many of you are watching near and far, uh, and we appreciate that as well. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing and peace of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all today and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And we send forth with hymn number 417, Sing a New Church, hymn 417. Summoned by the God who made us rich in our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still in unity. Let us bring the gifts that deliver and in splendor there Set to her and in his splendid married ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Trust the goodness of creation, trust the spirit strong within. Dare to dream the vision promise sprung from seed of what has been. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in his splendid married ways. Sing a new church into being one year. 